Hey guys, Joe DeMarco from the Crazy New York Driver Show for Friday, January 14th, 2022. Welcome to another eBay video. Today we're going to be discussing what many people are experiencing on eBay right now, and that's a big slowdown in sales. I'm also going to discuss difficult eBay customers who show their true colors before they even make the purchase through the eBay contact system. I'm going to show you some true examples, tell you about them, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. Once again, it's still cloudy with no sun predicted. It's going to be cloudy and rainy on Sunday as well, so I won't be able to do any location video this weekend either. Christ, man, it's depressing as can be. But let's go inside and let's get the video started. All right, guys, I'd like to start out by discussing your comments, questions, and concerns from last week's video. In fact, from the last two videos, which was my eBay video on Friday night, and then the one I did Sunday where I smashed that piece of junk I bought on Amazon. We'll start with the comments from that video first. Grocery Goat 06 said, Made in China junk. Dan Frisco said, China's on, live, loves those off brands. And he's right. That's the home of Chinese garbage, is Amazon. Skinny Cow. Now box it back up and return it to the seller saying item doesn't work and you want a full refund. That's the Amazon way. You know something? He's not wrong. The thing is, I smashed it and I threw it in the garbage where it belongs. That gave me so much more satisfaction. Speaking of that, right after that, Amazon sent me an email asking me to rate the item. You know, not the seller, just the item. I lambasted the item, said everything that was true about it. I even put a link to my video so people could look at that and click on it. But Amazon refused to publish it. They said me putting that link in violated terms of service as far as an external link. And they want me to redo the description or the rating, which I will do. But Jesus Christ, man. I had a feeling they were going to knock that one down. But I'm still going to put a very bad rating up for that piece of trash. Now... Here's a, a comment that kind of made me laugh about that video. It was from Willie McVilly. This was seven minutes of my life I will never get back. He has a blank channel with no activity. He does absolutely nothing on YouTube. So I responded by saying, Word on the street says you have nothing going on, at least judging by your empty channel. So this video was the highlight of your day. Yeah. Okay. Comments on the eBay video from last Friday. Charles Giannone said, Joe, that's quite a spacious deck. What's the square foot total of it? Did you have it built special or did it come with the house when you bought it? Yes, I had it built specially for me. So yeah. Dan Frisco wrote, Joe, Amazon FBA purchase January 3rd, still waiting for the item to ship, and it's almost 8 p.m. my time, January 7th. I'll be calling them to get a refund on Prime. They can't even ship in two days from my recent purchase experiences, and shipments take four to seven days to arrive. Dan Frisco, I've heard that from other people, and I think it's really disgusting. I'm having the same problem on eBay, okay? Many of you guys wrote in and said that I should have spent a few bucks extra and bought a good quality old school tape recorder, the kind with all the buttons on the bottom. So that's what I did on Monday. I went on to eBay, I found one, and I purchased it, okay? That was Monday. What day do you think the seller shipped the item? Trick question. They still haven't shipped the thing. Jesus of Nazareth. This is the kind of thing 
that gives eBay a bad name. Shot through the heart and you're to blame. You give love a bad name. Okay, okay, I get it. I don't know what I'm doing anyway. So yeah, I always try and ship my items next day. No matter what my handling time states in my listing. It goes out the next day. I want people coming back. I think it's disgusting that some eBay sellers wait four, five, and six days to ship their item. There's no excuse for that. But they sometimes write and say, oh, I haven't shipped it because I have so much going on. But I haven't heard from this seller yet. Vicki Gagan wrote, Warming up Sunday, Joe, with rain and snow. I can guarantee it's going to be cloudy, snowy, and rainy every day next week right into the week after. Joe, if anyone is interested, there's another option to eBay that has eBay's canceled categories. They're a design-your-own store platform, eCrater. I've noticed that a lot of former adults-only category eBay sellers use this platform. They're a fairly new platform. They've only been out of beta testing for the last couple of years. They do not charge fees for their stores. Does anybody out there have any experience selling on eCrater? If you'd like to weigh in with the positive and negative aspects, that would be cool. And Vicki Yagen is right. I alluded to this earlier in the video. Cloudy and rainy for Sunday, Monday, and then on. We can't get a sunny day. Dennis Copper wrote in, I had to laugh when Joe showed that paper of a hubcap. Too bad you can't return the favor showing them a car without hubcaps. Dennis is referring to the piece of paper I held up to the screen last week where a buyer bought the wrong item and sent me a line drawing of what he really wanted with the part number on it. If the joker would have done his homework before making the purchase, he wouldn't have made that mistake. ACDC for Life wrote, You're correct, Joe. Only leave feedback after the buyer leaves feedback first. I've experienced the same problems you mentioned in my 20 years selling on eBay. And the last comment is from Kathy Holloway. Thanks, Joe, for all you do with helping us sellers. Okay, let's get right into this week's topics. Main topic is going to be a huge astronomical slowdown in eBay sales for the last week or so. It's bad. Rarely do I come out here and moan about the lack of sales. I mean, I may have a day that's slow now and then, sure. But I'm hearing it in the Facebook group. Some people are going several days without sales. This week I went, I think my longest period was probably 30 hours without a sale. And all the sales, well, most of the sales that did come in were cheap, 20, 30, 40 dollar sales. Now on Sunday, I can attribute it to the football games. People are inside watching the games. I get that. But I don't know what's going on during the week. I really don't. So what I tried to do is to actually help spur sales, I did the following things. Number one, I'm running a 5% off store sale wide. No, wrong. I'm running a 5% sale store wide, okay? You got to love these no cut videos. They're a lot faster to make, a lot less work, and you guys get to enjoy any bloopers. Another thing I'm doing is sending offers to watchers. Now, unfortunately, this can be troublesome. Look at how people drive on this road. It's dangerous what they do. I'm telling you, that, that guy there, that's not unusual. I don't want to get into that. But anyway, sending offers to watchers has caused me two negative issues this week. Number one, I sent an offer to a watcher on Monday. They accepted the offer. They've never paid. That basically is the status quo. That doesn't bother me. I mean, it bothers me, but my point is the next one. Apparently, I sent an offer to another person on something. And they wrote to me and they said, You sent me an offer on this item and I'm not interested in it. Now, 
Why are they watching the item if they're not interested in it? The only people that get offers to watchers are people that are actually watching the item or people that have engaged in heavy browsing, meaning they've clicked on the item three or more times and looked at it. So something's not kosher there. But he went on to say that he's interested in a steel wheel that I have, and he wants to know why the shipping is so expensive. He said, if I may paraphrase this, I might be interested in the steel wheel you're selling, but you're going to have to lower the shipping considerably. The guy's in Colorado. I'm on the East Coast in cloudy New Jersey. The wheel is going to be shipped in a 17 by 17 by 8 inch box and it's very heavy, close to 30 pounds. It's going to cost, at the very least, probably 40 bucks to ship. The wheel itself is only, I think, $35. As soon as he complained about the shipping, I blocked him. All right? I have learned that if a person complains to you before they've even spent any money with you, it's only going to go downhill from there. And I urge you guys to always go with your gut. Please, it's not worth it for a few dollars, all right? It ain't worth risking it. I said to the guy, you're all the way in freaking Colorado, Jesus. I said, there's got to be a junkyard in your area. Go there. You won't have to spend any money on shipping. And of course, he got a little salty with me, but that's fine. He can get as salty as he wants because he's blocked. I actually expected him to write back yet again to me. And if he did, I was going to say to him, I have blocked you, but because there's a chance you might start a fake account just to buy this item, I am taking the item off eBay and I will sell it locally. I would have done that, but he has not yet written back to me. But if he does, I fully intend to do that. Because it's just not worth it. Okay? Or I could jack the price of the item up astronomically. Maybe I'll do that anyway. You know, that's what I think I'll do. Another thing I've been doing that is probably going to help is little by little, I'm going through my old listings that have been up over a year. I click on them just to see how many hits they've had. Some of them have had over a thousand hits. A thousand! That means a thousand people looked at the item and chose not to buy it. So what I'm doing is I'm ending those listings. And then what I'm doing is I'm going back and I'm going to start sell similar with the same item, but I'm taking all new pictures. Now, the only problem there, as I've talked to you about it before, is this freaking weather. It's driving me up the wall. I can't take any pictures. I have to wait for that rare sunny day and I just spread them all out there and I have a marathon of taking pictures, all right? It's very inconvenient and it's very nerve wracking living here in the Northeast because we have the worst weather of anyone. But that's what I've been doing. And to focus, to showcase how important pictures are, here's a true story that happened about a week and a half ago. Remember a week and a half ago, I was making a video and I was moaning and crying about how I hadn't listed anything in a long time because the weather was so nasty. So the next day after that video, I was literally panicking because it ain't good to wait two weeks between listing items on eBay. You know, I think it's going to hurt me in search. So I did something I didn't want to do. I took some pictures here in the office of some items on my desk here. Not many, maybe five. I listed them. A few days later, we had, let, let me also say that when I looked at the pictures in the listings, they looked absolutely atrocious. They came out horrible because there's no lighting. Okay? A few days later, we had a cloudy day like this but it was the kind that has some peaks of sun, not many. You can look off in the distance and see a small opening of blue sky and you, you just hope that it's gonna pass right over the sun and the sun will shine through. And I'm out there waiting for it. I keep looking and waiting and waiting and sure enough, bang, it aligned with the sun 
for three minutes or so. I went out there and I was able to get pictures for several items, maybe three or four, of the items that I had just taken the pictures of on my desk that came out horrible. So, all right, I went back to those listings, ended them all, started fresh with fresh pictures. Do you know one of those items sold almost instantly because not only were the pictures a whole lot crisper and better, they looked so good, I even raised the price of the item $10. I swear it. I raised the price $10, the pictures look great, the item sold. So trust me guys, pictures are very, very important. No, please, for Christ's sake, don't write in and say, well, Joe, you can go on Amazon and buy these Klieg lights and this and that. And <laughs> Years ago, somebody sent me a link to buy two of those kind of lights, you know, that arc down, and I bought them on Amazon. I don't remember what they cost. They had no effect whatsoever. They were junk. Now, maybe they weren't the right lights. I get that, okay? Once bitten, twice shy. If I can get a sunny day or a sunny half an hour, I can definitely get out there and take some pictures, and those are guaranteed to come out great. So, yeah, when I get a sunny day, I'm going to do some more listings. Once again, I had one of the stupidest people walking the earth contact me through the eBay contact system. I have a Honda hub listed. I want you to see this. I'm going to hold this up to the camera. Look at it. Look at the title. One, 2005 to 2007 Honda Accord. Notice the word one. Look at the picture. One. Okay. Now, I'm going to even click on the listing. I want you to see this. Unbelievable. Here's the description. You are buying one. Okay. So you see that I think you'll all agree that I basically described it well. Now, look at this question. Is the price for four or one? How can people be so freaking stupid and uneducated? And I'm not holding back on this, all right? Whether you're using mobile, as I just was, or your Mac, desktop, or whatever you're using, how the Christ can any reasonable person think that they're getting more than one of those for $28.50. The title said one, the picture shows one, the description said one, and one in parentheses. I don't get it. And the price, $28.50, who the hell is selling four genuine Honda hubs for $28.50? Once again, I feel that this is specifically something that happens with eBay Motors. Because the people there, they sometimes they don't read very well. And that's an example right there. I wrote back to the gentleman, if I may use the term, and I use it loosely, and I said, how can any responsible adult think they're getting four of these for $28.50 when it shows one in the picture, one in the title, one in the description, and common sense would dictate you don't get four for $28.50. Nonetheless, I blocked him immediately. That's trouble waiting to happen, okay? Somebody else contacted me and gave me lip. And just for the heck of it, I checked on the feedback that they left for their sellers. They had a feedback of like 95. And I checked the feedback to see that they had left for sellers. They only left two feedbacks out of 95, and both were negatives. So he was invited to the block party too, as John would say. So yeah, guys, I've kept you long enough today. I'm Crazy New York Driver, and you're not. Thank you for watching this video. Every Friday night, I make these videos to try and help you stay successful on eBay. If you think I did a good job, please leave me a thumbs up and smash that notification bell 
because it will keep you up to date when I go live and other things. If you don't think I did a good job, tell me in the comments section what you want me to discuss next week, and I will do my very, very best to do so. Remember, sell your items on eBay, not Amazon, because you will drown in the river. Rock on and peace!